Imagine waking up in a world where the sky never clears. Every corner hides a hellish nightmare, and your only hope for survival is wielding weapons that feel like a fusion of black magic and futuristic engineering. Could you handle it? That's the world of Doom, the Dark Ages, and today we're diving headfirst into it. We'll break down why Argent Denur is the most hostile place a human could step into, dissect every part of the Doom Slayer's arsenal, from the shield saw to the towering Atlan mech, and compare it all to real world science. Could any of these weapons actually work, or are they pure fantasy disguised as advanced tech? But before you even think about fighting, there's a fundamental question. What makes Argent Denur a place where no human should ever survive? Stepping into Argent Denur is like plunging into a nightmare where medieval horror meets warped sci-fi. The architecture is colossal. Massive towers piercing the sky, fortresses powered by unknown energy sources glowing with an eerie supernatural pulse. Everything feels alive and hostile. The ground is cracked and unstable. Gaping rifts reveal rivers of molten magma, burning at over 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. But the most dangerous part of Argent Denur isn't the heat, the air, or the landscape. It's what lives there. Demons of every kind roam the terrain like apex predators. And they're not mindless. They're coordinated, tactical, and lethal. The Komodo champion wields a chainsaw whip that slices through steel like butter and strikes with terrifying accuracy. The Vagary champion mixes brute force with arcane energy attacks. The enhanced Azrak evolves mid-battle, getting tougher, faster, and more aggressive with each phase. Even the grunts behave like trained killers, using the terrain, setting ambushes, coordinating attacks. One wrong move, one moment of hesitation, and you're done. A normal human wouldn't last three minutes. Historically, the civilization of Argent Denur tried to fight back. The Knight Centennials, elite warriors, used maces, spears, and swords, all enhanced with alien technology. Their armor amplified strength and endurance, but even that wasn't enough. One by one, they fell. And that's when the Doomslayer arrived. Not just surviving, dominating. Described as a moving tank forged of steel, he shrugs off fear, exhaustion, and physical limitations. It's like the entire planet exists just to fuel his rage. But what if you had access to his arsenal? Could his weapons work in the real world? The Doom Slayer doesn't just carry weapons. He wields instruments of divine annihilation, tools forged in blood, fire, and impossible science. Each one feels like it was torn from ancient prophecy then rebuilt by a mad engineer with alien blueprints and zero regard for physics. These aren't just guns and blades, they're statements. And the message is simple, nothing survives. Let's start with the shield saw, arguably the most absurd weapon in his arsenal. Imagine a riot shield, but with a high-speed rotary chainsaw embedded into it. One arm blocks, the other rips. It's as over the top as it sounds. But making it real, that's where things fall apart. Spinning a circular blade at 4,000 RPM while absorbing heavy melee impacts would require a material that's both shock absorbent and stable under extreme thermal stress. No real world aloe meets both criteria, not even close. Most combat shields today are made from ballistic polymers or layered steel, and none of them are built to hold a spinning saw. Now let's talk power. Chainsaws typically rely on airflow to cool their engines, which range from 2 to 5 horsepower. But this thing? It would need a sealed, compact motor running off something with the energy density of a fusion cell. Problem is, we don't have anything close. Not even military-grade lithium sulfur batteries could keep a weapon like that running for more than a few minutes. And then there's the weight. You'd be strapping 70 or even 80 pounds to one arm. Blade, motor, battery, casing, and absorbing the impact of every strike. Try sprinting into battle like that. You'd barely make it off the ground. Next up is the Skull Crusher, 
and this one's just as wild. It smashes enemies, then somehow turns their bones into ammunition, a weapon that kills and reloads itself. Sounds brutal, but there's a major problem. Bones don't make good bullets. Bone fragments are brittle, irregular, and jagged. They don't fly straight, they're not balanced. They'd have terrible aerodynamics, unpredictable spread, and would wreak havoc on the weapon's internal barrel. You'd be more likely to injure yourself than the enemy, and firing bone at high velocities, say around 1200 feet per second, would generate enough heat to char the organic material, clogging the gun with smoke and debris. Unless the skull crusher is also self-cleaning, you're not firing more than once. Now let's talk about the power gauntlet, the Slayer's glorified punch enhancer. It's not just a glove, it's a bunker buster strapped to your wrist. One hit sends a 660 pound demon flying. Three hits, their skull turns to dust. To make that happen, we're talking about 10,000 newtons of force, roughly the impact of a small car crash. That's not something you just train for. For comparison, the hardest punchers in combat sports history, guys like Francis Ngannou or Mike Tyson, top out around 1,300 pounds of force. Under ideal conditions, the Slayer does that effortlessly over and over again. So how would that work? You'd need servo motors embedded in your joints, spinal shock absorption systems, and bone reinforcement just to keep your limbs from shattering. Your fingers would need to be reinforced with composite aloes, maybe even grown through artificial osteogenesis. Bottom line, that kind of force would liquefy a normal person's wrist on impact. Now for a classic, the super shotgun. Double-barreled, mean, loud. And now, it's got a meat hook. In reality, a 10-gauge shotgun of that size comes with serious recoil, up to 60 foot-pounds of force per shot. That's enough to dislocate your shoulder if you're not trained. The Slayer fires it one-handed, mid-air, while swinging on a grappling hook. And let's talk about that hook for a second. It drags a 250-pound armored warrior across the battlefield at nearly 30 feet per second. That's over 3,000 newtons of force pulling on your shoulders and spine. Without full body integration into the suit, that kind of sudden acceleration would snap most humans like twigs. And we're still not done. There's the ballista, a crossbow-like weapon that fires plasma bolts capable of melting through demon armor. Plasma, if it could be weaponized, would require containment fields, electromagnetic stabilization, and thermal shielding. And the ballista fits all that in something the size of a backpack? Not even close. And here's the real kicker. The Doom Slayer uses all these weapons at once. Shield saw, gauntlet, shotgun, plasma crossbow, super armor, all online, all fully powered. Which brings us to the one thing no one talks about, energy. Running the shield saw for just an hour would drain about one kilowatt hour. That's already double the energy use of a high powered industrial drill. Now add in the gauntlet, the super shotgun, the ballista, the onboard targeting system, the Praetor suit, cooling, movement, all of it. You're looking at a combat loadout drawing between 15 and 20 kilowatt hours per hour of operation. How do you carry that? A nuclear battery? A fusion cell in a backpack? Maybe something like Iron Man's arc reactor, but that's still fiction. Even our most cutting edge tech, graphene batteries, solid state prototypes, military fuel cells, aren't even close. The Slayer isn't just walking into battle. He's carrying the power consumption of a city block on his back, and he never stops. But what if, instead of handheld weapons, you had an entire war machine? The Atlan mech is something else entirely. Standing roughly 300 feet tall, this walking fortress is armed with high caliber rotary guns, a mega shotgun, and the ability to stomp demons into paste. Theoretically, it's the perfect war machine. In practice, a logistical nightmare. A robot of that scale would require a continuous power supply of tens of megawatts. For reference, a modern wind turbine produces about two megawatts. 
you'd need at least five running full throttle just to keep one Atlan online. No battery on Earth could keep up. And we haven't even discussed the pilot. Every acceleration or turn would create G-forces that could knock you out, detach your retina, or trigger cardiac arrest. Fighter jet pilots wear specialized suits to withstand up to 9G for a few seconds. In the Atlan, these forces would hit you from all directions and last much longer, like being trapped on a roller coaster doing 190 miles per hour forever. Now picture riding a cybernetic dragon, a flying beast with a 65-foot wingspan, jet boosters, armored wings, and flamethrowers. To keep it airborne, you'd need engines pushing more than 22,000 pounds of thrust, ignoring weapon weight. No known metal alloy could survive the heat and pressure of sustained flight with that payload. Even if it did, the pilot would face extreme vibration, sudden altitude shifts, and pressure changes strong enough to cause blackout in seconds. These machines look incredible on screen, but riding one would be like trying to survive inside an airborne blender. This is where science slams the door. The Doom Slayer doesn't just survive the impossible, he ignores human biology altogether. His strength is otherworldly. To tear off limbs and crush skulls barehanded, his muscles would need the density and output of hydraulic presses, tendons reinforced with alien materials, bones closer to titanium than calcium, and his reflexes? While the average human reacts in 0.25 seconds, and elite athletes can dip to 0.15, the Slayer appears to react in under 0.05 seconds. That's faster than any known nervous system, even those of insects. What about endurance? He fights for hours. No food, no sleep, no water. The human body needs glucose, oxygen, and rest to flush lactic acid from muscles. Even ultramarathoners have to stop. The Slayer never does. His Praetor suit easily weighs over 100 pounds, and his weapons, another 90. That's more than most military exosuits can handle. Yet, he moves like a gymnast. Replicating this would require cutting-edge genetic engineering, advanced cybernetics, and direct neutral interfaces. Even then, the failure rate would be astronomical. In Doom The Dark Ages, survival isn't about bravery. It's a biological impossibility. Argent Denur is a living nightmare that obliterates any illusion that humans can make it out alive. Its monsters, warped physics, hostile terrain, and impossible tech remind us the Doom Slayer isn't just a warrior, he's an anomaly. But could we ever get there? With advances in biotech, neural engineering, and robotics, could a human someday approach that level? Let us know in the comments. Would you volunteer to be the first Doom Slayer prototype? Do you think science can get us close? If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Because science might not turn you into a demon-slaying god, but hey, it's a start.